In today's building our portfolio, we're zeroing in on investment opportunities in emerging markets. For that, we turn to Francis Claro, Portfolio Manager at Evergreen Global Opportunities in Boston. Welcome, Francis. Thank you, Kathleen. Of course, you oversee the international portfolio at Evergreen, which invests in small and mid-cap companies globally, managing $127 million in assets. Uh, what's, uh, what's your biggest challenge right now? Uh, certainly, we, we talking and focusing on Latin America. You know, Argentina's crisis uh, wasn't supposed to really bleed over into countries like Brazil and Uruguay, but it seems now that that's exactly what's happened. Well, Brazil is in a tight spot. The currency and the markets have been uh, declining, and uh, just recently the cur currency has been in a steep decline. And this is because investors are concerned that they might default on $300 billion of debt. Uh, the government is trying to negotiate with the IMF, but um, there's political uncertainty because there's an election this fall, and we're staying away from Brazil um, for, for the time being. Okay. Um, do you think the problems in Latin America are going to get worse? So is this whole area going to come down? I mean, it, quite apart from well, just staying away from Brazil, should we just say put a big sort of red X through Latin America investments for a while? Well, with the uh, increased risks in Brazil and the fact that Argentina is going through uh, a, a great deal of turmoil itself, uh, I think both of those markets uh, present uh, too high risks. Mexico, on the other hand, is a lot more investable. It's more linked to the United States. But emerging markets overall were attractive. However, developed markets have come down quite a bit. So relatively speaking, emerging markets are not as attractive as they were uh, earlier this year. OK. Uh, would that be true across the board then? Not just Latin America, but Asia, Eastern Europe, all these markets you, you're basically saying we should be a lot more cautious about? Essentially, yes. Uh, you know, in, in the Global Opportunities Fund, we're looking for smaller companies with above average growth prospects and below average valuations. Okay. And uh, right now we're more bent towards the international area as opposed to the United States. We've been concerned a little bit about the uh, decline in the U.S. dollar, which we think is warranted. And uh, recently we're more in international developed markets as opposed to okay. international emerging markets. So what are some of the stocks that you like? and? Uh would you recommend people buying uh, individual stocks that trade as ADRs, American de Depository Receipts, or would you say stick to funds? I, I would encourage investors to stick to funds, uh, particularly in the case of a global fund. You can have managers allocating assets between the U.S. and international markets, depending on what uh, looks better. And you can have managers also allocating assets among different international markets. So for an individual investor who can't do all the research, we would really recommend funds. Okay. And again, any stocks that you like for the more intrepid person who might want to, you know, try their luck that way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Puma is a German uh, footwear, sports footwear company. It's a company that's in the right place at the right time. It has products that people want. It's just restructured. It's trading on 10 times earnings with 25% growth. Um, then in Japan, we like Mandom, which a, is a cosmetics company that has uh, hair dyes and, uh, and hair care products for men and women. And in Japan, there's actually uh, quite a bit of growth in hair dyes for men. Um, that company is trading on 13 times earnings with a growth of 75%. Oh, um, okay, and I, I guess we don't have time for your final pick, a pick. Will you say it for me so I don't mispronounce it? It's sour. It's trading on eight times earnings with 40% growth next year. It's a Swiss textile machinery company benefiting from an upturn in the cycle. Okay, well, Francis Claro, thank you for joining us. We appreciate uh, your wisdom. We'll see what we can do with it. Thank you, Kathleen.